Joining me now is Nationals MP and former Resources Minister Keith Pitt. Keith, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Look, the Coalition has drawn a line in the sand on this energy policy, of course, ahead of the next election. You're yet to provide any cost things, though. Are you confident enough in the policy, even if you can't put a figure on it yet? Uh, Danica, it's great to be with you. And I heard your intro. Chris Bowen is isolated from reality. Uh, there's been multiple units built in both the UAE and South Korea. It's very clear what they cost. Uh, from memory, it was about 22 billion US uh, for five gigawatts in South Korea. You only have to look at an actual build. Uh, Chris Bowen's own words, 25% increase in intermittent wind and solar, and everyone's power bills have gone up. Imagine what it'll be like if he actually achieves what his target is, which is close to 80% or more. Uh, it would be an absolute disaster. So the differential between us and the Labor Party is very, very clear. Uh, we have a strategy to implement uh, nuclear in this country. And never forget that it's already underway. Uh, the AUKUS agreement means that we are already building a nuclear reactor for a submarine, but in Britain. Uh, we have to deal with high-level radioactive waste. Uh, we have to deal with all of the other issues, including building that technical capacity in this country. And it started the day that the AUKUS agreement was signed. Now, look, the Labor Premiers have come out today. They're saying a flat no to nuclear, including the LNP in your home state. I would support nuclear power unless it makes electricity more expensive. And all the evidence says that it will make electricity a lot more expensive. We're not supporting nuclear power. Nuclear energy is toxic, it's risky, it's more expensive. Recipe for disaster for the energy market in Western Australia. It makes no sense for Australia. It certainly makes no sense for Western Australia. Yeah, look, Keith, I mean, unsurprising, these are comments made uh, by Labor governments, but do you think you've got a fight coming up with the states? Well, our, our job as federal MPs and the opposition is to put forward propositions that are in the national interest, uh, and that is exactly what Peter Dutton has done. Uh, now, clearly, if the only two selection criteria were cost and reliability, well, you'd build more coal-fired power stations. That, that's the reality. Uh, but if you want zero emissions and reliability and affordability, nuclear is the only game in town. Uh, that's why it's been rolled out even further in other countries around the world. Uh, we should absolutely have a conversation with the Australian people about this. We've put forward uh, seven locations where we'll have consultation and discussions with local communities and we'll get their views on what they think. But clearly, there'll be an education piece to complete. But it is the only viable option. The idea that you can cover millions of hectares of this country with solar panels, thousands of wind turbines, which are intermittent and expected to work, is a complete fallacy. No Australian should have to look out the window to see if they can turn the stove on. No, well, that's it. And as I said in my editorial, it's these cold winter nights where really we have to ask the question, can we really rely on renewables only moving to the future? It just seems like an absurd proposition. I've got to ask you, what do you make of Chris Bowen's comments today? He said that you are not going to be able to get a nuclear reactor up by 2037. Well, that's been proven to be incorrect. Uh, as I said, look at the South Korean build. Look at the UAE build. It's very clear how long it takes for reactors of those sizes, and that's the APR 1400 in South Korea. And this is just reality. And what we know is that Mr Bowen is already missing his own targets, the targets that he's set. We know that it's driving the price up. We know they don't have the 28,000 kilometres of transmission that Mr Bowen has deemed necessary. And with our plan for nuclear at coal-fired power station sites, you don't need all of that. You've already got the easements, you've got connections, you've got a workforce that's readily available. Uh, and the reality is the only difference between nuclear and coal-fired power is how you produce steam, the energy source that produces steam. Uh, and I just want to make one more point around waste, Danica. If you look at the fleet in America, so the nuclear fleet in America, they provide electricity for around 70 million homes. Uh, they are the old-style reactors, they are old technology. And the amount of waste that they produce is about half an Olympic swimming pool a year. We will see more than 40 million tonne of wind turbine blades alone by 2050. And that's without solar panels. That's assuming they don't get hit by a cyclone or a bushfire or any other sort of storm that takes them out. You know, Labor are going to come out with a big scare campaign, no doubt. As I mentioned in my editorial there, it's like a three-eyed fish popping out of the water. They're going to pull out uh, all the stops here. How are you going to sell this to the public? Well, Chris Bowen's going to rely on the Simpsons. 
uh, we will rely on facts, on engineering and economics. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll be asking the Australian people to have that conversation with us because this is about Australia's future uh, and how strong we are into the future. And we know that nuclear energy makes for a strong country. It makes for an economic uh, boon, particularly in those regions where they'll be located. And our country needs to be stronger and not weaker. In terms of the locations, the Deputy Nationals leader, Perrin Davey, told Sky News today that should a community where a proposed site will go don't like the idea, disagree with it, then they won't go ahead with it in that location. Is that correct? Uh, well, I'm not in the shadow cabinet. I don't know what that policy proposal will be. But what I do know is as the former Minister for Resources, we worked our way through a potential low-level radioactive waste facility for storage in Kimber in South Australia. We asked for volunteer sites, started with 26. Over a period of years, that was narrowed down to three with a final decision for one where the community had more than 60% support. Now, that was enough to change the marriage laws in this country, 60% plus support. Uh, if the community supports it, let's build it. Well, it's going to be an interesting time between now and the next election as you sell this plan. Keith Pitt, always good to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening.